hello. Thank you all for being here. This week we are celebrating having 50,000 of 50K. you. 50K. Um, subscribed to our channel, even yeah. more than that now. Um, we are just so happy to, that you are here with us and that mm -hmm. we can share kind of what we've learned and that that's helpful to you. And so thanks for being here. Yeah, we are truly here for you guys. Mm -hmm. Like if we didn't get so many thank yous to say like, hey, this has meant so much to us in our pregnancy or caring for a new baby. Yeah. Like truly that's why we're here making videos every week. Yeah. Um, it's for you guys. So yeah, reading those comments really keeps us going mm -hmm. when it's like, oh, this really helped my anxiety in my pregnancy or I knew what to expect and that helped me so much. So that really keeps us going. Um, and so to get back, we wanted to answer some of the questions that you all have that you left on our community page um, and so we are gonna get right into that right after this if this is your first time meeting us I'm Sarah I am a board certified OBGYN and also a first-time mom yep. I'm Kurt I'm a board certified pediatrician and first-time dad and, and we, we are, are the doctors, doctors Bjorkman all right Thank you all for your amazing questions. We are so sorry that we are not gonna to get to all of them today. Um, that would be a three hour episode, um, but we're gonna to get to a bunch, so let's get to it. Um, was the whole pregnancy and parenting thing easier or harder than what you anticipated at the beginning of the whole story? What was most surprising? Um, the pregnancy thing I feel like was kind of, I knew what to expect because mm -hmm. I take care of pregnant women and have for a long time. Um, so I just, you know, kind of had seen some of the joys of pregnancy and then was prepared for them. Um, things that were really surprising. I had terrible um, symphysis pubis dysfunction and I like couldn't put my own foot shoe on my foot there at the end and it like hurt to roll over in bed. And I was just like, oh, this is, can be like really debilitating. Um, for me, I would say a big difference, like, you know, as a pediatrician, I saw kids for 10 to 15 minutes at a time in the office. And then now it's like, I've got a baby and I watch her for 10 to 15 minutes and then I still have the baby. And so it's a full time job and just like so understanding like how much work it is to be a parent 24 yeah. seven. It takes a lot of energy. It's so much work. Um, but we are like, I would say we're surprised at like just how much you can love a little human being. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun and this is just our new life. Yeah, it's so fun. Um, Next question. Uh, thank you for everything. Would love to get your opinion on baby led weeding and sleep training. Right. So these two topics came up a lot in questions and so we're actually going to dedicate full episodes mm -hmm. to um, feeding. We're going to do a feeding series of feeding your infant, baby yep. led weaning, starting solids, and then also um, an episode on sleep training. We will say kind of between now and then, if you need good resources for these, okay. um, for sleep, taking yes. care of babies, which we will link below, was an amazing resource amazing. for us in kind of thinking about wake windows and sleep for baby and then sleep training. Yes, um, for baby led weaning, that was something we did and loved. I think largely I just took it as sort of like the lazy parent approach because I was not about to like make purees mm -hmm. or do anything but like that. But there's some good reasons right. to do this. There so. are wonderful reasons to yeah. do baby led weaning and the resource I would say that I used a ton was Solid Starts at Solid Starts on Instagram. Um, they have a really great app. Um, of all the different foods mm -hmm. and how to prepare them based on their age and they are, are literal videos of babies certain ages eating trying these different foods um, it's an amazing resource it's what we used to kind of start that whole thing yeah um, but we'll do episodes out. on these too to yes. try to bring our experience and our knowledge too to help you guys out yeah, so sure. make sure you're subscribed for yeah, those. yeah yeah okay all right next question body image ups and downs after birth um, oh, this is a very real one. And I think the thing I tell myself um, is give yourself grace. Uh, and that is just so important with so many things after you have that baby, especially when it comes to um, your body, which just literally did an amazing thing. Um, ch pregnancy and childbirth is this extremely physically, mentally, and emotionally challenging thing that your body does. And so like, all it deserves is like a high five and a back rub. Um, and so just give yourself grace. It took your body nine months to do all that. 
give yourself time to get back. Um, and the most important thing you're doing right now is keeping this little human alive. Bounce back culture is like ridiculous. Um, you do not need to be worrying about how much you weigh or how saggy your belly is or anything like that. When you feel ready, you can start moving your body. It is more important to be strong and be healthy and be able to chase around your little one than like if you fit into your jeans that you did before you had the baby. Just get yourself some leggings that you can just pull up high-waisted mm. and you are good to go, mama. Okay. Um, when is baby's immune system strong enough for okay. travel? Uh, so this is something that we actually thought about ourselves too. We made a trip across country when baby was six weeks old. Um, some key things is that a fever in the first month of life is a big deal because their immune system is still developing. And so if they get a fever, that means a big workup, uh, usually in the emergency department. And so we work really hard to avoid a fever in that first month of life. Um, having said that, by the time they get you to that first round of vaccines, which is two, six months, two months of age, sorry, six weeks, two months of age, um, that's usually when their immune system is getting a lot better at preventing some of those serious bacterial infections and they've got that extra benefit of some of those vaccines that kind of helped us feel comfortable with taking a big trip at two months of age. Okay, what is both of your favorite outing to take your little girl? And I would say our favorite thing is just taking her on walks mm -hmm. and going outside. And we have been doing that since she was itty bitty. Um, Till, I mean now and it's really yeah. cold yeah so we have yeah. a baby carrier one of us wears her we get home from work at five o'clock and we go for a walk or we go hiking or we go whatever we just love being outside with her yeah and it's a lot of fun to just baby wear and have her with us like hey we're gonna go do life you're coming with yeah um, and she likes it too yeah adventures we like to go on adventures next question your opinion on tongue lip ties mm -hmm. uh, so first things here Pediatricians in general don't have a lot of training about mouth things in residency, Correct. especially not in medical school either. Right. So um, you can always ask your pediatrician if it's not part of their like focus point, like what good resources are in your community for this. Um, I will say if your baby is eating well, feeding well, is latching without pain or issue and is growing and they've got good oral motor skills, like they're fine. Yeah. Having said that, we had a little baby who had a really painful latch and was struggling Yikes. with breastfeeding quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. We had like an incredibly horrifically painful latch. Um, we had a really hard time getting Cease to latch. Like it was a two person job trying <laughs> to get her to latch. It took 30 minutes. She could never latch on the right. She had to be like sitting up. Um, and it was just like very difficult and very frustrating and we didn't know what was going on. Um, and so thankfully got plugged in with an amazing, brilliant resource. Um, her name is Megan Thornburg. Mm -hmm. She is a speech language pathologist. So she's a speech therapist with a specialization in myofunctional therapy. And she really was amazing, was amazing and got us plugged in with, um, the right people to help us. She helped us find um, a pediatric dentist who specialized in tongue ties. She helped us find um, some other people in the community to help us help Cease. Um, and then like gave us different exercises and different things to do to help her. So if you find yourself struggling um, and would like some help. Um, um, Meg is just an amazing resource, whether mm -hmm. it's like lip tie, tongue tie issues, kind of milestones with breastfeeding, bottle feeding, language articulation. Transitioning uh, to solids. Yeah. Um, She's been great, and so we'll make sure you guys have her information if those are issues you have too. Yeah. Okay, next question. My four and a half month old gets bored at times throughout the day. Can you give me ideas of how I can entertain my baby? I think... Love every. Get, subscribe to it. <laughs> Has everything you need in terms of like developmentally where your baby's at toys that are developmentally appropriate for them. Like, if you don't have a clue what to do with your newborn baby or your four and a half month old, yes. great resource with a new box that comes every two months. Yeah, super fun. Other things though, like you don't have to entertain your baby all day. And sometimes like just doing really simple things with them um, are great. So walk them around the house, open doors, turn lights on and off, mm -hmm. look in a closet at the different kinds of coats and have them touch things and talk to them and just involve them in daily life. Let them just be and look at things and kind of absorb this new world around them. Um, 
our baby didn't like to be just left be quite no, a bit. So there was lots of walking her around the house and letting her see things, we not at which all. is good. A lot of faucets, yeah. um, showing her things. Um, but I, the love every, as you said, does give you some ideas on how to play with your baby, and that's helpful. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, tips for relieving nasal chest congestion for babies. My own cough and wheeze breaks my heart. So. Um, super common that babies especially with frequent viral illnesses are going to have congestion um, and some wheezing type noises with that some good things you can do is just keeping their nasal passages moist this can be like bringing them in the bathroom with the shower running for steam um, maybe it's a vaporizer in the room if the house is really dry some little things like that can help if they're having like difficulty breathing make sure to talk to the pediatrician there may be some other kind of medical issues that they can work with you on Okay, uh, what are the minimal essentials that you really need in the first six months? Um, we loved this one. Um, so, things you really need. So you need a place for them to sleep, a safe, flat surface, so yep. a bassinet, bassinet or, or a crib, crib yep. whatever works for you. Um, and then the sleep thing is like a big part of baby's life too, so then this is also making sure you've got a good swaddle, yep. um, and then white noise. Those are like some clutch really things for sleep for us. Yep. Um, uh, then you need diapers of some variety, cloth or disposable. Um, we love pampers swaddlers, those, those have been our favorites. Yes, totally. Um, da, 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 what else is on here? So feed, and then you need like feeding supplies. So if you are bottle feeding, you're going to need a formula and some bottles. If you are breastfeeding, technically you're set up with everything you need. Um, but it is nice probably to have a breast pump, um, in case just to have, or at least a hand pump. Um, and or when you're going bottle. back to work, so then you can yeah. pump at work. And, and get things ready for that. Um, I guess they need clothes to wear. I'm not... All, everything we have is hand-me-downs, and highly recommend that, because they either are, like, throwing up on it or getting food all over it or something. Um, yep. And then lots of wipes or bibs, too, just with frequent spit-up, and mm -hmm. then just normal daily life with the baby. Yeah. Um, the other thing we love that is an essential was a baby carrier, but it just like made your life mm -hmm. easier if you have a baby that doesn't really like to be put down. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some very affordable ones on Amazon. I think the one other thing you want to have on hand in case your little one gets sick in those first six months is some infant Tylenol. Yep. And then we actually had this. This is a Frida Baby product. It is a, it is a pacifier that then the syringe, so the med syringe goes in. Here that then allows you to give slight. that in to the pacifier it works great for yeah, Tylenol. Really slight. In this first couple months. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. How do you navigate other people's or even family's opinions about what you should be doing with your baby? It often comes to me in small things like you should be doing this, uh, but definitely irks me. So. A B C D E F. Sorry, wrong song. Um, so anyway, like you're going to get lots of opinions. So something that like is clear to us, so we've done medical training and there's so many things we still don't know how to do. And so there are definitely times where we lean on grandmas or friends to say, Hey, this came up. What do we think about this? But then again, that is us soliciting advice. It's really tough when it's something that like you actually like have done research on, or you have knowledge and someone says like, Oh, you should do this. Um, in those times where someone's giving you advice that you don't really want or like you have like good reasons for doing things the way you're doing them, it's very okay to just be like, hey, you know what, here's the way we're doing this, this is why, thank you so much for your advice, and that's okay, like you're the parent, and at the end of the day, you are the person that's responsible for that little human. Yeah, you're the parent, the end. Like, easier said than done, maybe, but you're the parent, you know what's best for your kid and your family, and just mama bear mode. <laughs> Sorry. So, next question. Advice for a mom going back to work three months after babies arrive. Can I still breastfeed when I'm not at work? So, the first thing I'll say is, heck yes, you can absolutely still breastfeed when you're not at work and you are going to love direct breastfeeding because pumping is such a pain and you're definitely going to get sick of it when you're at work. Um, so <laughs> what I usually did is I feed her in the morning when I got up and then I'd feed her at night when like on the boob before she went to bed and then pumped during the day at work. Um, when mm. we're home on the weekends, we direct breastfeed. I try to stay as far away from the pump as I can. Um, 
advice for going back to work, um, have like do a trial run of the pumping day, um, you know, that week before you go back to work, just try it. Make sure you have your stuff, make sure you have your bottles, make sure you have a container to store the milk in. Cause there's just like so much stuff that you have. Like I got to work on my first day and was wearing a dress that like zipped up and back and I wore a Victoria's Secret normal bra. Like, and I had to change into a pumping bra and it was just stupid. And had I like maybe run through that once at home, I would have done be done better on my first day. Um, so that's my pro tip. Um, other than that, my advice for going back to work is you're amazing. It is so awesome that your kiddo has a badass mom who's going to work and doing something that she loves. Um, do not feel guilty about working. All the studies show that kiddos that have a mom at work do just fine. Um, God bless all the mamas that are staying at home, taking care of those kiddos, I think that's the hardest job in the world. Um, and so just give yourself a ton of grace and know that you love your job and you love your baby and feel really good. The other thing I would say is feel, try to have a childcare plan that feels good to you. Um, and that will make you feel so much better about being back at work. So whether that means scoping out every single daycare in town to figure out you love them or interviewing 15 different college students to be there helping or figuring something out with your in-laws to make sure they're, someone's watching your kid. Whatever works for you and you feel comfortable with will make you feel so much better about being away from your baby. Okay, next question. When should you change how often you're feeding baby? I have a three month old and I'm still feeding him every three hours during the day. Um, this comes up in a lot in terms of what does it look like to transition your baby through feeds as they age when they go from newborn that's eating every two to three hours um, to then like feeding six times a day, five times a day, four times a day. Um, the biggest thing is you can let your baby set that pace. We're going to do some dedicated episodes on this too. Yeah. Um, if your baby's hungry, feed your baby. If you can space it out, make them eat a little bit more at a time, that's okay and can help with your daily life. How long did it take you to conceive and could you share some trying to conceive tips? So, we got pregnant on our third mm -hmm. month of trying. Um, which, you know, about 80% of couples are pregnant within six months of trying. We actually have a whole episode um, already about um, how to get pregnant fast um, and evidence-based information on how to do that. I think the biggest thing is knowing, tracking your cycles to know when you ovulate because you are most likely to get pregnant really those one to two days before you ovulate. So having sex um, on those one to two days before you ovulate, um, is going to be the highest yield. Definitely check that episode out um, as it has some great info for you. Okay. I'd love to know more about how you are balancing work, time with baby, time with each other, and fitness. I have a wee one and I'm trying to figure out reasonable fitness expectations and how to prioritize fitness among all the other important things, baby, in my life. You and me both. <laughs> um, it's just a different life having a baby. Like your priorities are so shifted. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you go to work and then you get home at five o'clock and the baby's gotta eat and you wanna hang out with her mm -hmm. and talk to each other and then the baby goes to bed and you're like, okay, well, we could go work out or we could, I don't know, sit on the couch and fall asleep or watch our new Netflix show. Um, it's just about balance, right? Like some days you eat salads and some days you eat donuts and that's fine. Um, I would say from the fitness standpoint, giving yourself some grace, realizing that five to 10 minutes, a few days a week can make a huge difference. And so just mm -hmm. start with what you're able to do. Yeah. Um, and then if you can't work out that day, then yeah. it's okay. Yeah. I would say setting achievable goals yep. is really important. Like Maybe working out every single day of the week, if that was something you did, just isn't achievable anymore. And it is it is important to prioritize self-care. Um, mm -hmm. And so if that is something that's important to you and you getting your 20-minute workout in is something you need to be more present for your baby and your family, then do it. So I think prioritize what you need to be at your best. Um, and if that's a workout, cool for me, maybe it's sitting on the couch eating ice cream. Um, you just have to figure out what that looks like for you um, and what fills your cup. And, and let your partner know and see it, like 
how they can support you in doing those things. Yes. Um, you know, communication in terms of what they need and what you need is going to be key for making you guys both successful, happy, and healthy. Yep. All right. Question, Sarah. How was Kurt able to support you and the baby after birth? What did you actually find helpful and what would you all do differently, if anything? Would love to hear more about how partners can help new mothers after childbirth. Um, so, Kurt was just like in general amazing. Um, I remember like being in the delivery room and my epidural had like just worn off and we were about to move to postpartum, but we hadn't yet and it was taking a long time and I wanted to take a shower. And so Kurt, I mean, literally just helped me get to the bathroom, held me up, made sure I didn't fall over and like washed my body off like right after having a baby. I'm just like this bloody mess. And Kurt's like, they're holding my hand, making sure like, I'm alive and well. Then when we got home, it was really a lot of sharing mm -hmm. of things. Like, I think the biggest help to me was that Kurt would physically carry the baby and do some of the mm -hmm. things because I at least felt a little like I'd just gone through a battle and was physically um, exhausted, uncomfortable, etc. And so when it was time to breastfeed the baby, Kurt would physically bring me the baby. Mm -hmm. He would then go change her diaper when she woke up at two in the morning for the middle of the night feed. I would feed her. He'd go change her diaper. He'd bring her back when she was crying incessantly. Like Kurt and I were both doing equal, yeah. trying to get her to... And I don't know, I, I think a lot of my mindset, especially the first week, two weeks home, was that like you had just gone through this major process of delivering a baby and like your goals were to heal and to feed the baby and everything else needed to be me was kind of my mindset. Yeah. And that, back. and that I, I, one of my other favorite moments at the hospital, I think back now, um, I remember I was breastfeeding Cease, um, and Kurt was like feeding me whatever we'd gotten. I don't know. I think it was like a quesadilla or something from the hospital kitchen. Um, and so I was feeding Cease and he was feeding me because like it required a multitasking to, I couldn't do all of these things at once. And it was just really sweet. Um, like he was just making sure I was surviving as well. Um, so just, uh, being involved kind of in every step of the way and, doing things like mm -hmm. without being asked make sure that she is fed make sure there is water near her take the baby be the one getting up and getting down changing the diapers things like that because mm -hmm. um, you're both definitely exhausted but the one who just had the baby is also like physically trying to heal mm -hmm. um and uncomfortable so i think those were some things that were awesome and super helpful and i'm mm -hmm. grateful Next question. My baby spits up even after sitting up for an hour. What else can I do? Uh, so first off, baby spit up is incredibly common, especially for the first six months, up to a year of age. Spit up after feeds happens. Yeah, I feel like um, he's puked on everything, everything all the time. Um, and so the first step is to know that spit up is normal. If your baby is growing, it's probably just a laundry issue. And there's sometimes that the spit up can cause some pain with their reflux that they maybe need, to, need an antacid for, but usually it's just laundry. Happy spitter. Happy spitter. Yeah. And so definitely like sometimes like having the baby sit up for a while after feeds can help keep that food in their stomach as that little muscle develops that's on top of the stomach and holds that food in. Um, but by and large, the best thing you can do is realizing that spit up is normal and it's going to happen if it's to the point where it's a growth issue and it's limiting their growth, talk to the pediatrician. Yeah, I feel like Cease just at some point just wasn't spitting up anymore, like around six-ish months. Yeah. Does that seem yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, which is pretty common. Six okay. to nine months is when they start to grow out of it. I'd love to know more about postpartum care for mom, things like how to speed healing and what are actually useful products and what is being marketed but doesn't help. Um, I'm 36 weeks pregnant, so recovery after birth is on my mind. Um, you are on the home stretch. You can do it. I'm so excited for you to meet your little one. I actually um, 
am just about to record an episode on postpartum like perineal care, taking care of your bottom after you have the baby and all the products you need for that. So stay tuned for that. Um, in terms of... Well, we're going to release that next week, I think. Okay. Um, in terms of postpartum care for mom, I have a really great um, postpartum vlog, I think, that talks about everything you're looking for that we will um, link in the description. Um, check that out. So, thinking ahead, I don't want to know the baby's sex prior to delivery, but my partner does so they can prepare for anything specific to caring for an infant boy versus girl. Are there any particular differences that would be important to know in the first few weeks or months? And I think the answer to that one is it's really just about taking care of boy parts versus girl parts. Um, yeah, the cleaning's a little bit different. It's a bit more dangerous changing a diaper for a boy in terms yeah. of you might get peed on. Must keep the penis um, pointing down at all times. And some circumcision times. care if that's something you guys do. Yep. Um, but really nothing you need ahead of time for one versus the other. Girls um, have some more nooks and crannies yeah. you gotta make sure you clean. Um, but like in terms of maybe you wanna gender specific decorations for your nursery. But other than that, really nothing specific to prepare for. Yeah. Yay. Um, my question is, what helped most in those early postpartum days? A housekeeper, food delivery dog walker. Please mention all the things you implemented. Um, number one thing was a very involved partner. That was really helpful. Something Kurt got for us for Christmas last year was um, a gal to come and clean our house. She comes once a month um, and cleans the house and that was amazing because we like keep a base level of tidy but um to have somebody come and like deep clean bathrooms was really mm -hmm. nice um and what else we, we had a lot of support from family in the first couple of weeks yes. like in terms of i think a big thing was just food mm -hmm. like you guys you need to eat yeah and you need to stay hydrated and so like we had food from family so we really like yeah. helped us through in those first couple of weeks that was yeah. really key for both of us as we were just trying to survive and you were trying to heal and we were trying to feed a baby. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next one. What is the best age for baby to start drinking water as a part of daily routine and how much? Um, so when it comes to water and babies, the general recommendation is not to give water in the first six months of life. The reason for this is just their kidneys are still developing and lots of water without other electrolytes can sometimes be hard to process and can, can cause some electrolyte abnormalities. So generally no significant amounts of water before six months. Six months is generally a good time for them to start working on a cup. You yeah. can just like seeing you use a cup, kind of watching you model that with a dry cup of swallowing, things like that, and then you can work on adding water in there yeah. um, slowly as they build that up to the time they're a year of age. Yeah. So next question. I am going into my third trimester of pregnancy and I'm still terrified that something is going to go wrong losing my baby, um, especially with the crazy spread of the new COVID variation. Any advice for a scared first time mom? I feel like everyone expects me to be scared of labor or being a mom, but in reality, I'm scared of losing my baby. Hmm. And, and this is this is a pretty long thread of multiple women sharing some feelings. Yeah, yeah, so I think this pandemic pregnancy is a thing and it's really hard and it's really isolating and it's very scary um, because you're kind of alone and your partner can't go with you to things and you're wearing a mask and you don't have as many visits and um, it's really anxiety provoking um, and I think that it is normal to feel this way. Um, be reassured that you are doing the right things for your baby, you are going to your prenatal visits, um, you're doing kick counts. Um, the recommendation is to get vaccinated mm -hmm. um, to protect you and baby from COVID. Um, and the studies are showing that that's safe um, and will decrease your risks. Mm -hmm. Just know that feelings like this are very common. Um, your OB team is there for you and also wants to support you um, to feel confident and reassured with the rest of your pregnancy that you can do this and your baby is gonna be okay and you are in good hands. Like your OB provider wants you to feel those things. So if you are feeling overwhelmed or nervous about losing your baby, talk to your OB about that um, and let them support you. It's our job to take care of you and keep your little baby safe. Um, so just talk to them. Okay. Next question. How to avoid mastitis slash clogged duct slash nipple pain, please. <laughs> um, 
The key to this um, avoiding mastitis or clogged ducts is to regularly um, and completely empty your breasts. So mastitis happens when milk sits, stasis, milk stasis in the breasts, um, and you get an infection and you can actually get really, really sick. So, and same as you clog ducts, you aren't fully emptying your breasts and you get a clog and it's just really painful and uncomfortable. So the key is to be putting the baby to the boob. Um, frequently or be pumping at regular intervals to make sure you're completely emptying your breasts. Gotcha. And then the nipple pain piece, I feel like was the shields or... Nipple pain, there are different options. I think the first thing to evaluate is to make sure that the baby has a good latch. Um, and so that's going to be seeking help from a lactation consultant uh, to make sure the baby has a good latch. And then there's different things you can do in terms of a nipple shield, different positions, deepening the latch. Um, and my favorite thing um, to, for nipple health was the silverettes um, to help um, he, your nipples heal um, while you're like getting better at breastfeeding. So what's the one thing you found to be super hard um, with the baby that you had thought before baby came would be super easy? Mine was breastfeeding and dealing with a lower milk supply. Um, so breastfeeding, I would say, was the number one thing that was so, so hard. Um, definitely feel you on that one. And I think the other thing that was surprising that's super hard is to actually be able to get anything done, um, when the baby is awake. Um, she just didn't in the first, I don't know, a few weeks, month, she like did not want to be put down. She didn't mm -hmm. sleep anywhere. Um, and so I think I would envisioned that oh, we'd put her in her little pack and play and we'd do some work while she napped or whatever. But that wasn't a real yeah. thing. Like when she is awake, she requires constant attention. And that is still true. Um, so when she's awake, we are hanging out with her mm -hmm. and doing stuff. And we um, do things after she goes to bed. Um, so I know, um, when I was on maternity leave, I had a, I found a college student actually, um, who would come and hang out with her while I was home if I wanted to do it, get something done. Um, and so that was one of our workarounds or we would alternate like Kurt would hang out with Cease while I did something I needed to do or vice versa, mm -hmm. kind of, um, divide and conquer once in a while. Um, cause yeah, it's, uh, you can't get anything done. <laughs> Last but not least, um, from another Sarah B, love it. Um, maybe something on all the advice thrown your way as new parents or even during pregnancy and how it really has been for you guys. Um, maybe some good news, like adventures you went on with baby girl and special moments that were unexpected. Everyone always kind of tells you how labor is going to be for you and that you will have no time or energy or, or as much drive after, like work-wise. Um, but just share the positive. Yeah, so I think something that's really interesting is we had a lot of people be like, oh, like, just wait for this thing to happen or just wait for that thing to happen. But like, like bad was, thing, yeah, like, like just wait till they're teething or just wait till they're three and saying no or just wait like for all these bad things. Yeah, and so I think something that's been actually really nice is just you have this human being who like you are the center of their universe and like the love you have for them is greater than anything you've experienced before sorry um but like you just like have this little human that just smiles and you melt or like how special can you reading a book to a child in your lap and so like yeah those it it is definitely a lot of work mm -hmm. um but like the, it's really there are some really magical moments um that just it's it's really yeah. great. We and were so we were out of town for like a week last month, and then we came home and we had this Sunday morning. It was like the first like time we'd been in our house, just the three of us for a while, mm -hmm. um, and we were like eating oatmeal in the kitchen or something, and like some song came on, and I like picked her up, and we were like dancing in the kitchen, and she had oatmeal on her face, and we we're spinning around, and just like this, this look of pure joy on the face of a baby that like. Like moments like that that like make it just so wonderful no matter how long some of the days are or how challenging some of the things are like you've got this 
little human being that like lights up for you. Like we, one of our favorite things is she'll, our baby cease kisses. So she, every once in a while, will just like open mouth, kiss you and like suck on your face. Grabs your hair, grabs a chin, yeah. pulls you in. It's just hilarious. Yeah. Um, and everybody wants a baby cease kiss and she's been kind of stingy with them. Um, and so that's like just one of the things that is joy. And so I, we try really hard to do like just wait positive statements for people and our friends and new moms. Um, like just wait until your baby smiles at you or just wait until you realize that like you know your, like you get your baby and you know their schedule better than anyone. And just wait until you can decipher like, that's a food cry. That's a, I need a different diaper cry. Like just wait until all of these things, like even some of the work is a lot of joy. Um, just wait till she sleeps for her first four hour stretch or just wait until like breastfeeding finally clicks for you. There's so many like things that you're just doing with this little person and it's really, really fun and a challenge that is so rewarding and so just wait for all the great things that are coming. Um, great things are coming. That is all the questions we have time for. I feel like we've already talked for way too long. Hope you all enjoyed. Um, we have awesome things coming for you in the coming weeks that we've done. We have taken care of your bottom, um, your perineum after a delivery. We have, what else do we have coming? Um, feeding, we're gonna do a whole series on feeding newborns and then yeah. as you're doing like, um, baby led weaning and advancing through different age groups. Um, we're gonna do some sleep training videos. Yep. We've got some videos coming out about how to use an LV and a willow breast pumps. Yep, some more like pregnancy education topics like preeclampsia and cholestasis and some different things. So we hope you'll stay tuned. If you have any questions, just wait moments you want to share, um, please leave them in the comments below. We love, love, love to hear from you guys. Um, if you're not subscribed, do that and we will see you next week. Bye. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.